There we go. <laughs> How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Einsley, thank you so much for tuning in. How are you doing? Robert, Paul, Carol, thank you so much. Nicole, how are you going? Look, Corin, thank you so much for tuning in. And Robert, how are you guys doing? Did you did you like my uh, the the beginning of the show there? Uh, I believe Pratt, how's it going in the Bahamas? And uh, Nicole, thank you so much for tuning in. Guys, I am so excited today. It's the end of the week. Uh, yeah, what's happening? What's happening? Your end of the town there. Einstein says, I'm awesome. Paul says, hey, all successful people in the room. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Everybody that hangs around me ends up either being very prosperous or they enjoy what they're doing. Guys, my name is Prosper Tarwinga and... Um, as you guys know, my biggest belief is that I want your business to be profitable and enjoyable. And I believe that every online business that's out there, yourself, Team B, yourself, Evenly, yourself, Ansley, yourself, Robert, should be able to create for and relate to the people you're going to be demanding money off of, all right? And uh, as you know, guys, every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we hang around here so that we can help businesses like yourself to grow, essentially through digital marketing, um, you know, strategies that I give out, and also just have a feel of what's out there, who's doing what, so that I can inspire you to do things that also inspire you. Now, can you just type in where you are tuning in from so that I get a feel of who's in the house and so that I get a feel of what's actually happening out there. Julianne, thank you so much. I think I just saw your email come through, but I was already on the lunch and learn, so you know what? Uh, that is very important to me. Hey, guys, you know what? 67 days left until 2018. 59, if I'm not mistaken, left until Christmas. That's not a lot of time, you know. That is not a lot of time. And if we're really looking at this, Derek Hull, thank you so much for tuning in. Robert, thank you so much for uh, tuning in again. Um, if we're really looking at it, we now have two months left to come up with a marketing strategy for us to enter um, 2018 with a bang. How many of you guys have a marketing strategy or have created one or know what a marketing strategy is? I'm Slee, Kunis, sunny Perth. I love Perth. Have you ever been to Rottnest Island? I took my family there once. It was amazing. It was amazing. You know, you know, when it comes to marketing and when it comes to selling and when it comes to just being a person of influence or of value to your audience, you have to position yourself. And high positioning is everything. If people don't know you, if people don't trust you, if people don't know what you offer, it will be very difficult for anyone to even stop by and listen to what you're saying. That's why even if you go into the Apple shop, yeah, everybody doesn't mind waiting in line. You know why? Because they know they are being served with a world-class brand. You know? That's just what happens. Now, how do you then get to those levels? How do you get that same edge that when you go to an Apple shop, you are more than happy to just wait? Hmm? Do you have right now clients that can, if you tell them I'm busy today, they're able to wait for you up until at the end of the weekend? That just happened with me today. I told um, a client that I can't speak to them today or on Sunday or on Saturday because I'm going to be going to Adelaide. And they're like, I'll wait for you. I never thought that was possible in the market. You know, when you position yourself to become a person that is of value, a person that can help other people actually get results, people are more than willing to wait for you People are more than willing to, to, to trip, stumble, and fall to get your content. Now, how do you do that? All right? First of all, you want to start by becoming a person of value. I can't stress this enough. Because I know that 1% of coaches and consultants and people out there are actually making 
at least maybe six figures or some sort of money in their business. It's because they are not giving out value. It's because they are not showing people what is it that they can actually help people with. How are people going to know what to come to you for? If you are not able to do that, maybe through, um, um, what do you call it, videos like this, create digital products. Create something that people can nibble onto while they're building rapport with you and getting to know you. We all have ideas. We all have intellect. Uh, we all have intellectual property. But if you're not packaging that property or that knowledge into either podcasts, videos, or some sort of consumables that people can get to know who you are, how will anyone know what you've got to offer? Honestly says we want to find their pain point and solve their problems. That's true, but how are you going to know what their pain point is if you are not expressing to them how you can help them? You need to help them by actually helping them. And one of the best ways to do this is to share your ideas um, with a vast number of people in an effective way is usually by creating digital products. All right, This will be likely something people can download or like an online tool you know what I mean? So such products are not, they're not interrupting the, pe the person's pattern. They can always go on to them on demand when they feel like. Instead of you coming into their newsfeed and trying to break their pattern every single time. People don't want that. People are busy. Our prospects are human too, you know? So when you create digital products, that then creates some sort of means of communication that consumers can then choose to participate in at their own time. And if you actually package it well, just like we've packaged this lunch and learn here, you know specifically that every single day at 2 p.m. AEST without fail on a business day, Prosper will be on the other side of the camera. Delivering value because my mission is to make sure that your business is profitable and enjoyable. What have you got that is digitally accessible so that your clients can reach out to you when you're not there? You know, so if you package your products really well and if they're packaged correctly, um, you know, such products have high perceived value. You know what I mean? Even though the costs is 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 cheaper for you to repro rep reproduce them just make sure people have things that they can talk to you uh abdul says what is rapport and lie i don't know i don't know where you heard that from man um and i also abdul can you also tell me if you actually run a business if not it's it's okay if you don't continue watching these videos because we really want people that have businesses that really want to learn and not waste other people's time, all right? So half the time when somebody takes time to listen to your podcast, they actually feel that rapport with you. You know what I mean? They bond with you. That's when they get to know you. That's when they get to trust that your information is correct. And that's when they get to really start to understand what is unique about you, what you actually have to offer, etc., etc. all right? So if you've got digital, um, you know, books or eBooks that you've created, make sure they are available. Webinars are also a really good thing that you can put out there so that people can consume while you are not present. All right. Cause people need to know you these days. It used to be six to eight touch points, but I read somewhere, um, you know, Neil Patel was saying it can go up to 21 uh, points that people now want to see if what you are doing is actually genuine and you are here to last. So you, you need to start becoming that person that can do business with them, that has value to offer rather than just a person they could do business with. All right. How are they going to validate that? You know why? Because at the at any given time, your prospect is watching something, listening to something, reading something. Is any of the things that they're doing yours? Because if you're missing out on you being seen, heard by your prospects, how are they going to know you exist? 
So maybe you might be thinking to yourself, I have a service. How am I going to, um, you know, productize or digitalize my service? Maybe your service is being a plumber or maybe your service is something that is physical. All right. Uh, Paul says change that could change that could into a must. Oh, they must do business with you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I kind of lost you there. So you might be wondering, just in case you, you offer a service, how can you also uh, digitalize your service? Write about um, what you do. Post about what you do. Do podcast. Interview other people that are in your niche. Find out what other people are doing. How are they consuming content? And once you do that, deliver it to your audience. Because you know why? People are always searching for information, entertainment, on the internet and if your brand is the one that's providing that information they get to know you they get to trust you and they get to like you these days every second person is a business person so how are you going to stand out of the noise how are you going to stand out of the crowd by providing value before people even know who you are by providing value so that you can create that rapport no one is going to be picking up the phone these days. Nobody's going to just jump onto your website just because they heard about you or they saw your truck passing by. Put out content so that people can actually, um, you know, get to consume and get to know you, trust you, and then want to do business with you. And honestly, Ansley says, yes, they like to be educated and entertained. That's the main reason why people are coming to the internet. So if you're a service provider, figure out how can you package your service into a product? Yeah, find out if you cannot start doing monthly, um, you know, services that you can do. I talked to a lady who, who does people's hair and she's like, oh, how can, how can I make my business into a monthly, um, into a monthly sort of, uh, you know, payment plan? And then I, I, I told her, listen, how much do you charge per hair and that per head? And then she told me $200. All right. And then I said, what if, and, and how many times does a person come and have their hair done? And then they're like, yeah, maybe once a month. And I was like, what if you start charging um, a group of people half of that 200, but they're paying you monthly. So literally they're coming in to get their hair done, but with numbers, you now get your money consistently. And she thought about it. And if you, if you can understand what I'm talking about here, you will see where I'm going with this. All right. So a service can also be packaged like a product so that people are paying you on a monthly basis. You have guaranteed income. Even if they don't come or they come in um, at that particular time, you are now just having, you know, guaranteed people that are coming to your saloon or whatever business you're doing. You know, the software as a service, um, you know, wh whatever. Now they're going to be bringing in cars that you can just rent out car as a service. So anything can be productized. You know, you can start a club if you're a videographer where people just pay maybe $50 a month and then they come in and then they get their videos done, whichever way it is. Some people won't show up. Some people will. I'm not saying 50 verbatim, but you can start charging a stipulated fee and then start, um, you know, start a monthly sort of program with your business. You get guaranteed income and your customers are guaranteed of service. All right. So, and in the process for you to keep those people engaged, you're sending them out content, tips and tricks on how to do certain things. And you can give your service a name, you know, it can have a method on, on, on which, how you do it. It can have a brochure. It can be delivered or trained by professionals, or you can deliver it online. All of those things. So when you productize a service, it includes, you know, you know, all those elements of you having guaranteed income. You know, so some people are doing it. Some people don't care. It's, it's about you. Treat your work as a product. Treat your service as a product. And once you do that, you now start having people following, um, you know, your, 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 your trail. And clients want that.
even plastic surgeons they know that you know you can you can charge your clients a yearly fee because once somebody gets you know plastic surgery even tattoo parlors you know, instead of waiting for people to come through, you can actually have a tattoo club where people pay you $200 or $300 a month. It depends on how much you're charging, but get the idea of what I'm talking about. You get guaranteed income and your clients can just book in and walk in whenever they can. Sometimes they don't show up that month. That's profit for you. You know, it doesn't have to be necessarily this method, but that's the way, you know, goods and services are now going to be purchased in the near future. So you want to make sure that you've got that in place as well. You know, and while you're at it, here's the big secret. Share all of your secrets. You know, knowledge has been commoditized. Anything that anyone wants to know is now on Google. But they're always going to be looking for experts or people that know a thing or two about that particular thing. So that's the reason why they still need people to interpret. So if you think you've got a secret to earning certain things or you've got a secret to know something, don't keep it. Let people know. And guess what? Even if I sit here for 30 minutes and tell you everything I know about marketing, the one thing is people don't implement and the more people don't implement, they're just going to be like, ah, oh, prospect, this is a bit too much. There you go. Just do it for us. You know how much business I've been getting out of these Facebook lives? And that's the reason why I continue. You know? So here's the big secret. Don't keep any secrets. Share your best ideas with everyone. Help them by actually helping them. You know? Consider this. You know, the most famous chefs... They share all their recipes every week. What chef do you know that's on TV? Um, what Can you type in the name of a chef so that we, we can talk about him? Um, one person that comes to mind is uh, Oliver. What's his name? Jamie Oliver. You know? The more they share, the more value that actually goes through the roof about them. Done for you deals. People are mostly lazy and want to um, want you done for them. Exactly. And thank you so much, Ansley. I think we're going to be chatting at, uh, sometime soon, right? Yes. And Gordon Ramsay. How many times are they sitting there and telling you all of their recipes? You don't hear people saying, oh, now that I've got all of Jamie recipes, I mean, Jamie Oliver's recipes, I'll never visit any of his restaurants again. Instead, people are stumbling, tripping and falling, waiting to be, um, you know, invited or go into their, their into, into his, his, his cooking classes to find out how they too can now use that recipe to cook a delicious meal. You know, the more people have, the more people are going to want. So share your ideas freely, just like we're doing right now. Every single day I come around and I share some sort of insight or idea that you can utilize and implement immediately. But guess what happens behind the scenes? I get people recommending other people to watch these videos. I get people recommending each other to, to come and, and, and subscribe to my services or my programs or my products. Yes, yes, Paul Curran, you're right about Heston. I think we went to... Um, we went to his dinner the other time, dinner by Heston. I think I had a, I was going to show you something. Where is it? Ah, no, it's not here. I was going to show you the little thing uh, from, from uh, dinner by Heston. It was, it was here. I was keeping it as a souvenir. People will still go to those restaurants, you know, and Stephen Seaton, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So at the end of the day, once you start giving out your information, you also leave room in your head for better ideas. And if you start sharing powerful ideas, people will come, come to you so that you can help them implement them. That is, that is the truth or something that we all know. Do you know what I mean? So if you've got a valuable service that you have, give people information, teach people what to want. Teach people how to use your product. Teach people how to make more of your, I mean, with your services and, 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 and stuff like that. You know? 
And that's the reason why the masters, the gurus, they're always running free workshops. Just so that you know what it is that they have to offer. If you're just going to hold on to your little bit of knowledge, who is going to know what you have to offer? You know? So at the end of the day, just figure out who you are, who you need to reach out to, what they need right now, and how can you be of service? Immerse yourself into the market. Immerse yourself with your product so that people, if you're not available, people can also consume your stuff. I think it was, uh, um, what was his name? I think it was, uh, who is this rich guy? Paul Carroll says, it's under the thing that's next to the other stuff. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. You know? I mean, there's, there's, there's always a lot of things. Look, picture this. Do you, know, do you know Nike doesn't go out to sell shoes? They go out to sell the idea of what it means to wear their brand. You know? They go out and sell the idea of what it means to wear their brand. And they command, and then they start commanding a premium for it. They just don't put up shoes and say, hey, here's a Nike shoe. No, they show you the shoe uh, being utilized to gain respect, to gain power, to gain freedom, to gain no notoriety. And then when you then see it, you know, they associate their brand with, with aspiration, with goodness. You know, they want to show people how far their brand can go and how far you can go wearing a pair of Nikes. But then what happens when you click order, you wait, you wait for four days, the bell rings and then the, the, the shoes are delivered. You can't do whatever it is. Um, they, 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 they showed you in order for you to buy that, that, that pair of uh, shoes. But you know what? That's a transaction. They've made money, which is what you want to do as a business person. So don't go out there selling shoes. Sell the aspiration. Sell the hope, sell the dreams. That's what people are looking for. If you go out there and say, hey, buy this pen, nobody's going to want to buy it. But if you say, buy a, a well-written marketing plan or buy a well-written will or buy a well-written poem, people would buy that pen so that they get that thing that they aspire for. So don't go in there and, and try and hide your secrets. How are people going to know what you're good for? Oh, I'm going to Zasha. How are you going, cuz? Thank you so much, Misha. Zoom fun bear. Yeah? Do you know what I mean? So great brands actually sell ideas. And people like yourself really need to understand how to market well beyond the function of the commodity that you're you're selling. I sell SEO services, but I'm going way beyond that. I want people to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And in the process, how do they get that? They utilize my services. I product, I've productized my services. If you go in and say, I sell this, nobody cares about it. They care about what you can do for them. So if you've been watching this show today and, you know, gotten a bit of value and seen how different, you know, mindset towards having a marketing plan and really, really sinking into providing value, being there for your prospects and actually showing them you can help them by actually helping them, that will make the biggest difference in, 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 in your 2018 right there, you know? Anything else has been commoditized. Whatever service you're selling right now, look at what the aspiration of the purchaser is and go and try and go for that. You know? Sell to people's wants and deliver their needs. You just want to help people to have a happier existence through your services, through your knowledge, through whatever it is that you're going to be offering them. Okay? 
So half the time, some people will be asking themselves, how am I going to create this marketing plan, etc., etc. First of all, you really, really need to focus on the market. Do you know who needs your product? Do you know what would happen if they don't use your product? And second of all, focus on the particular product itself. You know? If the person you're marketing to, if the person you're targeting to, do they actually need that particular service or product? You know? And honestly says, and then they'll keep coming back to you if they feel they have really good value from you in the first instance. Exactly. You are paid in direct proportion to the value you put in the marketplace. So back in the days, built it and they will come. Used to work. But right now your competition has become global. Some person who's got a laptop will and credibility in Bujumbura right now can be eating your lunch. Okay? So also don't quote me verbatim because not every marketing plan is a good marketing plan. You know, there's certain qualities that it needs to meet. Do you know what I mean? And be able for you to, 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 to actually consider it to be an effective plan. Sit down, look at where you want your business to be in five years, where you want your business to be in 10 years. Unless you don't have a business, then maybe we've just wasted 30 minutes on you. But for the person that really wants to be in the top 2% that is actually producing somebody who's going to be potentially successful, somebody who's not going to be mediocre in 2018, there is a framework that you need to follow. Make sure your products are available when your customers are looking for them. I've got a two-year-old. I think you've uh, probably seen pictures of her and stuff like that. Right now, she has grown up in an on-demand market so much that she doesn't even know that if an episode is finished, that's it. She needs to either watch it back again or she needs somebody to, to, to you know, put in the next episode as soon as that is finished. She would never find the pain or hear the pain of having to wait the next week for a, a new episode to come through. So you want to make sure that your customers, they're going through the same thing as well. Their phones are now just a really big attachment to, to, to their bodies. So you want to make sure that their minds, their intellect, you know, all of that is filled with either your content, your service, your building rapport, and they're getting to know you. They're getting to trust you so that they'll do business with you. Because if you're not, somebody else is filling up that void. Somebody else is eating your lunch money. You know, so when you focus on the market, your market should be narrowly defined. No longer should you continue using these vague market, you know, demographics of saying, um, you know, I deal with 25 year olds to 35 year olds. I explained in the other video before that 25 year olds and 35 year olds of this year, this age, they are totally different people. All right. So you want to make sure that your market is in place. You can't please everybody. So if you're going to be putting out content there, make sure you are actually delivering to the right kind of person with the right kind of pain that your product can fix. All right. I would like to help you so much and you try and getting you to try and figure out how you too can create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. One other thing is you might be saying, oh, I don't know what to do next. I just want to show you one thing. Your life story and your life experience have great commercial value than you can ever think of. So you can never run out of content as long as you are breathing because you know something that someone is not aware of. Okay, I'll tell you one story before I, I jump off. I taught my little girl how to tie her shoelaces and she's only two years old. What, 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 what did that take me? Two seconds. But what does that give her? A lifetime of information. She's going to save herself from falling. 
She's going to save herself from embarrassment and she's going to gain confidence from something that I imparted to her for just two seconds. Now, can you imagine what it is that you already know that you can package within yourself and actually sell it to other people that are going through what you went through? I'm more than happy to help you figure this all out and so that you start playing with yourself on the internet and start creating something that is of value, something that other people are willing to share, something that other people are also proud to be a part of, just like what Nike is doing. You know? So in the meantime, I hope you're going to have a fantastic um, weekend. And if you've got any questions, don't forget, I'm always around for you. I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I want you to start getting results. And I want you to actually really, really win at this game. Till the next episode, which is going to be Monday at 2 p.m. AEST. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you all so much, um, you know, for just being you and for you making this all possible. Honestly, thank you so much for your contribution to this show today. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and your weekend.